there's a new bill proposing new rules for people who telework and remote work. And this is coming just weeks after members of Congress have accused federal employees of fraud for taking higher salaries while teleworking. We are gonna go over some of the key points in this bill, starting with the fact that teleworkers are gonna to have to commute to their work site at least once a week. So it's twice per pay period. A pay period is typically 14 days. So they're gonna to have to come in to the office at least once. Now this is nothing new. A lot of federal agencies, they already have people coming in once a week. But what we're hearing is there might be somewhat of a creep, meaning that you come in once a week now, but let's say in November or December, how about you start coming in twice a week? And then in January, how about everybody just comes in three times a week? We could witness something like that occurring in a lot of federal agencies. Of course, this is not gonna impact people who are 100% remote work. There will also be a new requirement that if you're telework or remote work, every 12 months, you're gonna to have to renew your agreement. And what this means to me is even if you were hired as 100% remote work, at the 12 month mark, you're gonna be sitting back at the negotiation table trying to figure out is this position, the way that it's categorized, is this the best thing for the agency? And is it the best thing for you? So this is a little unsettling because nobody wants to accept a job offer for a remote work position. And in their head, they're thinking, okay, I'm good. I'm just gonna stay at home and I can do my other obligations and my other duties. And then next thing you know, next week, that's not the case anymore. In addition to that, there's going to be a new training module that's required for people that are teleworking, people that are remote work. And I can only imagine it's gonna be a list of things that you cannot do while you're remote working or while you're teleworking. See, a lot of agencies are having a problem with their employees because people are supposed to be on the clock. They're supposed to be working at their computer. And then when someone tries to reach out to them because they need help or for whatever reason, they're off at the mechanic getting their oil changed or they're, or they're doing laundry downstairs in the basement so they can't be reached. People are emailing them, they're not responding. People call them on Teams and they're nowhere to be found. Now this is during a duty day. This frustrates a lot of supervisors. A lot of managers are not happy about this. So they're talking about beefing up, making the training module somewhat robust to really drive the point home that while you're working, you have to be in front of your computer. If you don't know it, most federal employees, they receive a 30 minute lunch. And there's also two 15 minute breaks. Now some supervisors, some agencies allow you to combine it so you can take one entire hour off but others, they don't want you combining it. OPM also wants to start receiving consistent and reliable data from the federal agencies regarding telework, regarding remote work. And in addition to that, they want the agencies to come up with recommendations on how they can make it more accurate. And to me, what I think about when I hear that is eventually maybe they might adopt some sort of key logging software. You might have heard about this in the private sector where they're, they're monitoring the strikes on your keyboard to determine whether or not you're working. So if you're off watching Netflix in the next room, they can tell that a key hasn't been pressed in 30 minutes or so. And that could come with some adverse actions. Now this hasn't been done yet, but we're in the recommendation stage and something's gonna end up changing. Something is gonna end up happening. Another interesting piece of news with this, this bill would authorize federal agencies to hire the spouses of military members and law enforcement officers non-competitively for remote work positions. The idea here is, let's say you have your military member that's stationed in some rural area. A lot of these bases are in rural areas, say Waynesville, Missouri, or St. Roberts, Missouri. There's Fort Leonard Wood there, right? So if you have your family members there, there are not a lot of competitive positions they can apply for. If you wanna work retail, probably could do that. You probably work at the school also. But the, the idea is to have the family members, the spouse or whoever, to be able to get remote work jobs so that they can, they can continue and progress in a meaningful career. Same thing with Border Patrol. A lot of the Border Patrol assignments are on small little towns on the Texas border. Not many economical opportunities there. Now, we've had spousal preference for military service members. This takes it a step further and really focuses in on the remote work type jobs. And this is the first time that I'm aware of where we're actually giving a preference to law enforcement officers when it comes to their spouses. And this is a non-competitive hiring authority. So this is very much like your Schedule A or your disabled veteran. 
meaning that when you get the job, it'll be in the accepted service. You wait the 24 months and then it should convert into the competitive service. So this could be a good opportunity for a lot of people. It's clear that telework and remote work, it's under a microscope right now. It's being heavily analyzed. And it wasn't always like this before the pandemic. When you had a telework agreement, it was like a one pager, maybe, maybe it was two pages. And you would just sign it. You would say, hey, I have reliable Wi-Fi and I promise to use the VPN when I sign on to the network. And that was pretty much it. There was no extensive training in a lot of these federal agencies. Well, that's not gonna be the same anymore. Moving forward, it's only gonna be more, more regulations, more policies, more documents, more of everything. If remote work is something that you're chasing, you have to have your eyes wide open when it comes to the competition. A lot more people are applying for these positions. In the IRS, for example, IRS, they put out over a dozen remote work positions, 100% remote work, and they had thousands of people <laughs> responding to these job announcements. So much, they had to cancel it. They put the job announcement down because there was no way they were gonna be able to review all of those resumes. And then they put the announcement back up, but this time they had an application limit so after the first 100 or 200 applications, they shut it down. All right, if you're still interested in a federal government job, I did a live stream recently where I answered over a dozen questions about the federal hiring process. If you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.